And welcome everyone. This is another session of our craft, uh, craft webinars, I guess we could call them. Um, and yeah, today we're, we're joined by Jim. Uh, and Jim's, Jim, I've well, been speaking to Jim a little bit online uh, via DMs quite a bit. He's been giving me some advice about, you know, journaling, about um, reviews and stuff. So I'm really excited you've prepared something today about, you know, quarterly and weekly reviews and your process with them, Jim. Um, but you guys who are listening in live, um, what brought you to this webinar? Are you guys already doing weekly reviews? Are you curious about weekly reviews? So yeah, feel free to throw in chat, um, you know, what, how you're currently using uh, reviews and stuff. Um, Jim, before we officially kick off, like, do you want to give a quick intro to who you are? Maybe it's part of your thing anyway, but do you want to give a quick intro to who you are? Uh, and maybe even, you know, what started you with weekly reviews and things, how you even got started with that kind of stuff? Okay, sure. Um, I'm retired. I was a um, minister for a lot of years, a chaplain in the um, U.S. Air Force, and then I was an attorney. So I became a JAG in the Air Force as well. So I've had a lot of different kinds of careers and um, things that I do. Since I retired, I went through the typical retirement process of um, first being really glad I didn't have a job and just being able to do whatever I wanted to do. And then after a time, I found that got, got really boring and almost depressing because I wasn't being intellectually challenged. So about that time, I ran into some material by David Sparks, McSparky, about um, how, do you, how to do a roles inventory and kind of set up a review system, which he was developing at the same time. So that's kind of where I got most of this material from. So I'm a good thief. Um, I stole <laughs> most of this material and um, have reformed it and, and uh, adapted it to what I've seen as my own needs. So I've, I've been doing this approach kind of for a couple of years now. Awesome. I think that's the beauty of it, right? Like it's good when people are sharing these tips and ideas and experiences online, it's good to, yeah, first steal them, but then also adapt them to your own and make sure that they work for you. Uh, so it's really cool. It sounds like, you know, we should we should thank David Sparks for this uh, for this presentation indirectly. So it's really good to, to finally see it. Um, do you want to kick us off, Jim? Do you want to get us started with your presentation? Okay. See if I can get it on here. All right. Of course, now it doesn't. And everyone listening in, yeah, there will be a Q&A uh, section at the end. So feel free to, to answer any, uh, ask any questions in the, in the Q&A. Um, and yeah, for, for anything in Q&A, we'll come, come to it a bit later on. Okay. Is the full presentation on the screen now? Yep. Okay, good. All right. So the title, obviously, The Power of Quarterly and Weekly Reviews. We're going to be talking about both of them. Um, by way of an overview, I want to talk about why do reviews, why is it important to do reviews, uh, for at least for me. Um, number two is the content of reviews. What do I actually cover when I do reviews? And then a little more practicality from the standpoint of how do I do reviews? I already mentioned this in the introduction, but where all of this really started for me was at maxsparky.com. Um, probably some of the people listening in are, are um, familiar with him um, and his work. And he really was the one that gave me the idea of doing a roles kind of an approach, which is the basis of my reviews. And I'll explain that more as we go through it. So why do reviews? I have two major goals when I do reviews. And actually, um, the first one I had as a goal, the second one I didn't really have as a goal when I started, but as I was doing it, I realized that that's what it was doing for me. So the first thing is to live an intentional life. You know, I've always been the kind of person that wants to kind of um, decide what I want to do and set my own agenda and reach goals and that sort of thing. So I wanted to live a more intentional life and a review process really, really helps me to do that. The other thing though that I discovered that it does is it also helps me to live a more balanced life because when I do my review system, I look at all these different areas of my life every week and then once a quarter in a more thorough way. And it reminds me of all these different areas I have in life and if I'm neglecting something, that's pretty obvious at that point. And I think, oh man, I've forgotten all about that. I need to get back into that. So those two are the major goals. How does that work then? 
Well, number one, it helps me to stay on track doing what's important to me. Um, this is a coffee shop I was just in, um, actually Monday. It's my favorite coffee shop to go. I do a thing called Coffee Shop Mondays, which is um, when I write my blog post. So I have to have all the work done before it. But whoops, sorry about that. What that does for me is it, it helps me to, um, well, sorry, I got way behind here. What it helps me to do then is to do the kind of things I want to do. Second thing it does is it reminds myself of all of my life roles. I mean, we all have a life that's much more than just what we do as work. You know, I do some work from the standpoint of blog writing and presentations and that sort of thing. But by doing these reviews, it reminds me of all the other life roles I have. So on the left is my wife. I'm a husband. That's one of my children, my daughter, Sharon. I'm a father. Um, I'm a hiker. I have other hobbies as well. And when I do these reviews, it just kind of reminds me of all these different things that I do. And um, it says, hey, you've ignored this thing over here or you need to do this over here. Otherwise, I find it's really easy to forget about things. You know, you can just go on and get busy with work or something and forget all about some aspect of your life. And you know, later on, you wake up to that. So I find that really helpful. The other thing it does uh, in this process is it gives me a method to schedule my work so that the important things get done. So I'll talk about this in a little more detail later, but I actually do um, <clears throat> a form of time blocking where I go in and I decide at the beginning of the week, you know, I know what I'm going to be working on, and then I schedule those things so I actually get those things done. It also then balances my life by thinking about all my roles and making adjustments. So this is a list of my roles audit in my weekly template. And these are the 10 roles that I've identified for me. Um, and by balance, I don't mean I give equal time to everything. I don't think that's what life balance is all about. I think it's giving appropriate time to things but sometimes I just forget about things. So this helps me to realize when I've ignored certain areas and um, then gets me back on track and says, gee, I, I need to spend more time with this or whatever. So the content of reviews, I do both quarterly and weekly reviews. So we're gonna talk about each one of those. Quarterly review, why I do it quarterly? I find that a 12 week period is a much more realistic period of time for me to deal with than a half year review or a yearly review. Um, to me, when I think of a half a year, that sounds like forever. You know, I've got plenty of time to do whatever I want to. So, what it does is it, I overestimate my ability. I almost always do when I have a bigger block of time like that, I will think to myself, oh, I can get all of these different things done because that's a long period of time, six months or a year. I've got all the time in the world to get this stuff done. Well, I can't, I've found. I always overestimate my ability. The other thing I do is I procrastinate because gee, I've got six months to get that done. I've got five months to get that done. And it, it just does not work for me. The way I'm wired, the way I'm put together, um, a quarterly review makes a lot more sense because then I'm only dealing with 12 weeks. That gives a sense of urgency to getting busy and getting on these projects that I decide to, uh, to work on during that period. It, it gives me more of a sense of motivation to actually get them done because I've got a more constrained period of time on myself. So the key book in this area is The 12 Week Year by Moran and Langton. If um, you haven't read that, I'd, I'd recommend it. It's a, it's a great book. So the first thing I do when I do a quarterly review is a very thorough roles audit. This is um, just one of the ideals that I have for roles. This is healthy, active person. So I've got things like I exercise, I stay healthy by 
uh, walking and hiking, doing yoga, taking supplements, eating healthy food, getting annual flu immunizations, go to the doctor, I keep my weight down by doing certain things, I monitor my blood pressure every day. That's my ideal vision of what I would look like if I fit this role of healthy, active person. So it's not necessarily I can reach all of these goals all the time. Um, this one's a little more practical, but some of them really aren't, like being an ideal husband. I mean, you've got values in there that are very hard to 100% fulfill. You know, I'm going to support my wife. I'm going to listen to her. I'm going to always pay attention to her when she's talking. Yeah, right. You know, that sort of thing. Um, they are ideals. They're not necessarily what I'm actually going to um, be able to do or not. So for each role, I've got one of these ideal descriptions. And then right below that, I've got questions for them. So this is an example of the more thorough questions. How am I doing? What could I do better? What am I doing well? What do I love about this role? What do I hate about this role? What should I keep doing? What should I do more of? What should I stop doing? What should I put on hold? What are my action items for the next 90 days relating to this specific role? So it prompts those kinds of questions for me and um, brings out then new action items. When I get those new action items, then I move them as appropriate either to my task manager, which in my case is things, or I put them on a habit tracker, or it goes into you know something else that that um, that's a that is a way I'm going to track and, and keep track of that action item. The other thing that I do in the quarterly review, and again most of this was stolen from Nick Sparky, um, is you know ask more general questions like what were my big wins this last quarter? What lessons did I learn? What am I looking forward to? What were the things I really like doing? Um, what am I thinking about for the next quarter? And then consider the challenges. You know, what went wrong the last quarter? Um, could I have done it better? Could I have predicted it? What might go wrong this next quarter? And are there ways that I could um, make that easier on myself and plan for that? And then a whole section on projects and habits. So that has to do with what projects did I ship this past quarter? Um, what projects am I actively working on or have in my active projects folder? What projects are in my holds folder, in, um, in my case, in my archives? Um, what are the projects I want to do the next 12 weeks? And you notice that there's a little toggle under each one of those, um, which is a, a series of questions that delves more deeply into every one of those topics. And then habits is something to look at. And then overall roles and habits, you know, am I trying to do too much? You know, what should I throw overboard because I'm stressing myself out or whatever by trying to do too much at the same time. Okay, weekly reviews then. Um, this is just uh, on the front here, a copy of my template for weekly review. And you see it starts off with a roles audit as well, but it's only got three questions on a weekly basis. How am I doing? What could I do better? And what am I doing well in each specific role? I really love these questions because the first one is kind of just a general sense of how am I doing? Um, you know, I actually wrote a blog post on an, an alternate approach to this, which is, did I do my best in being a husband or whatever? I don't like that because that's a yes, no answer. And first of all, I don't think we always have to do our best, quote unquote, in everything we do. Um, sometimes you might not want to do your best in an area because it's just something that needs to get done and it doesn't matter. So I don't like that question. But this question of how am I doing is such a great open ended question. Um, and again, this is a McSparky question. Um, you know, it just asks general sense. How do I feel about how I'm meeting the ideals in this role? And then the second one, what could I do better? It's a really nice way of saying to myself, where did you screw up the last week, <laughs> right? You know, it's, uh, and I like that. It's not negative. It recognizes we're all human beings and we're going to make mistakes. 
and we're not going to be perfect in implementing our systems and everything. So what could I have done better this last week? And then what am I doing well? So it recognizes the positive things that I'm doing as well. And um, I just think it's a, it's a great way to approach each one of these roles every week. And if I can answer those questions, I've got a pretty good sense of, of where I am and maybe what I need to do or maybe changes that I need to make. So then I look ahead into my calendar and my task manager to see what's coming up in the next week. I review my project progress. So that's my projects list in craft uh, where I have, you'll notice the re second one, craft reviews presentation. So I'll be able to have that as done when, um, when we get this done. But I look at all the projects that I am working on and say, okay, how am I doing in each one of these? Am I on track? Uh, if it's one that's going to be completed in a quarter, you know, some of them may take two or three or four quarters to complete. But if it's something I complete this quarter, how am I doing in that? Have I been working on that? Then there's this, what I call system cleanup. That's I check all of my inboxes where I put stuff. So I've got the, um, I use the Readwise service and I've been using the new reader that they have. And that's, um, it works like a, um, Let's see, what are some of the programs? Uh, Pocket, that sort of thing. You can you can you use it as your RSS reader, and then you can move things over to your inbox or to your archive or whatever. So I check those inboxes to see if there's stuff I need to catch up with or whatever. Same thing with um, task, my task manager. If I put stuff into the inbox and I haven't assigned it yet, then I try and do that at that time. Um, I use DevonThink for long-term storage, so I do the same thing with that inbox. In other words, it's just kind of tidying up at, um, at the end of the week and making sure that things are stay moving along in the system that I've got. Um, I also try and clear all my email out by either doing something with it or responding to it or whatever if there's any email left over. And then my computer desktop. You know, I I grew up with you know, since 1984, I've had a Mac and I've been used to the visual interface and leaving things on the desktop that I want to have easy access to. And I still tend to do that a lot. Well, sometimes my desktop's a mess. So I go in there and try and clean that up and get everything off my desktop to be fresh for a new week. Uh, the other thing that I do that's really important is I time block my week. I choose what I'm going to work on that week and then I time block it in my calendar. So if you see there, I've got my weekly review on Sunday uh, morning and then prepare for my writing topic. And then on Monday, I've got write my blog post. I go to some coffee shop. My wife usually goes with me. So that's why we have, we have it a different color there. And then we usually go on a date lunch after that. Um, then I'm gonna be processing Courage is Calling, the book by um, Holiday uh, highlights that, that afternoon. I'm going to do a blog post final edit and publish it on Tuesday morning. Um, and then on Wednesday, I was scheduled and worked on this presentation. So, you know, it it's the way I get things done. I find if I don't block my time to do certain things, I, it's too easy just to fritter away the time and find other stuff to do and and not focus on really moving the needle and getting something done. Okay, so what are the tools for reviews? What do I use to actually get this done? Well, if you look at the bottom of this under my templates, I've got a weekly review template. Whoops, I'm sorry. I've got a, I screwed this up again. Okay, weekly review template and a quarterly review and re or a reflection and planning template, which is probably a better thing. And I find that by using those templates, that's what keeps everything together for me because everything is together in one craft document. It looks nice. I enjoy using it. It's pretty. Um, I used to have all of these templates in um, drafts and it was kind of functional, but it was really, really ugly. <laughs> it was just plain text. It was nasty. So when I mo started moving it to craft and it's gone through a couple of versions now, um, it just made a huge difference as far as my enjoyment in the process. So I have a quarterly template. 
and then I have a weekly template that I use. Uh, using the templates, I use them not only as just question lists, you know, in ideal roles and that sort of stuff, but I also record my answers in each one. So when I go to, to do my weekly review, I'll go to my templates folder, click on the template, um, say I want another a duplicate document, and then I fill in the date, and then I work through the template, and I record everything the way that I answer the different questions so I can go back and look at it if I want to. I highlight action items to make sure that I do something with those by the end of the session. A lot of times I'll stop as I'm doing the review if I hit a highlight action, and then I'll just add it to Habit Tracker or, or Task Manager or whatever. Um, so then I, you know, I, I, I move things that need to be to the task manager or the habit tracker. Also, sometimes in using the templates, I think of new projects, particularly with the quarterly. You know, I think, whoa, I need to have a project to do so-and-so. Then I record that as well. So when I do these things is I do the quarterly usually on an overnight because it's pretty thorough and it takes a lot of time. You want to give yourself enough time to really go into that. If you haven't done a role, life roles, inventory, and um, evaluation, you really need to do that as a first step to doing this whole process because you need to get those roles kind of nailed down and write your ideal descriptions for each one of those roles. And that way, you know, you'll have, you'll have the material that you're going to be reviewing. In other words, you need to do the work of figuring out what you're going to be reviewing before you actually sit down to do the review. At least that's the way I, I do it, and that works for me. I imagine the material could be adapted to some other um, approach or process as well. So when I do a quarterly, I do an overnight. When I, was only do, when I was doing every six months, I would actually a lot of times do two nights. I would leave, have the afternoon, the evening, the whole next day and then the next morning to kind of wrap things up to work on this stuff and it's it's really amazing i mean for me it makes a difference to get away from home and be able to um to focus on this with no distractions at all i go by myself um and now with the quarterly i'm just going for an overnight um we live in um the desert in arizona and there are all kinds of resorts and uh, bed and breakfast and all that kind of stuff around here. So I just book a night, you know, someplace inexpensive usually, and um, go there and just have time to myself to work on this stuff. And that's when I find it's the most productive. So I do an overnight. You wouldn't have to, you know, you could take a full afternoon or go somewhere, go to a coffee shop or whatever and work on it if you wanted to, uh, whatever works for you. But I've got the time and um, I found it's really functional to do the overnight. The weekly reviews I do on Sunday afternoons. So, you know, I've gotten everything else done. I've done my household chores day is kind of Saturday. Then Sunday mornings, I'll usually work on my reviews and that kind of thing and try and knock those out and then start working for, or, or actually not start working, but um, uh, get my, my blog post that I'm going to be writing on Monday get that in much better shape by doing a, a full mind map for it and bringing in all the material that I've been collecting over a period of time and all of that. But that's what works for me. So quarterly, once a quarter on an overnight, weekly on a Sunday. Okay, so got questions. One thing I wanted to go to first though, before in case I forget is resources. I have already posted to the event page, the comments, a link to this document on the right here, which um, will give you links to all of the information you need to have to get here, including at the bottom are the links to my templates. The templates are sanitized templates because obviously when you're dealing with your roles, you deal with a lot of personal information. So I left a couple of them, the first one, and I think the one about being a healthy person, I left those filled in. So you had a sample of what a, an ideal vision of what your life in a particular role would might look like, but um, you're free to use those. I've set it up and I've used the advanced thing to where you can duplicate it and you can go to the links and, and have fun and go from there.
Amazing. I mean, first okay. of all, Jim, I want to just thank you. Like that was really, really well presented. Um, and you know, I, I really enjoyed it. Like it was really thorough. And I love the fact you used the craft kind of gradient and everything in your presentation too. So first of all, yeah, hats off to you. That was a great presentation. And I really appreciate you taking the time and the effort to, to put that together. So thank you so much Good. for that. Uh, and we did, we already had a question from Dave and anyone else listening in, uh, throw your questions in the Q&A right now. Um, Dave asked, and you kind of touched upon this already in just now, how long do you think these take you in, in, in total? Like let's say the Sunday afternoon or morning, how long does the weekly review take? How long approximately does the, the quarterly review take? A lot of times the weekly one takes um, anywhere from half an hour to an hour. It kind of depends upon how busy of a week it's been for one thing and how much other stuff is going on. Um, I would say probably an average of about 45 minutes. Yeah. And the quarterly, is that, is that, can it be open? Is that, how long does the quarterly one usually take you, do you think? Yeah, you, I mean, it depends upon the person, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, other people might be slower than I am. Other people might be faster than I am. They might want to spend a lot more time thinking about each one of the questions um, and do other things with them or whatever. So it's really very personal as to how long it would take. But I, you know, as far as the time, I think it's the most productive block of time that I have in the week because yeah. that sets me up for everything else that I do in the week. Yeah, that's pretty. I mean, for example, this is a question for me now. You know, I do weekly reviews. And at one point I was doing monthly and at one point I was doing yearly. And I'd actually read back through the whole year and go through like all these really detailed stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I must admit something which sometimes I question is like, Am I doing this in the most useful way? Like, is this really having a positive impact? Have you ever doubted or have you ever kind of had the same feelings where sometimes you're like, oh, is this really <laughs> making an impact I want it to make? And if so, how do you deal with that? Well, how yeah. Overcome that? Well, a lot of it has to do with my mood on yeah. Sunday. There, there are some Sundays that for me, it is like pulling teeth to sit down and work through my, my review. Uh, for whatever reason, emotionally or whatever, I am just not there, you know, <laughs> and I'm not motivated to do it. Um, I try and make myself do it, and I'm successful most of the time. Yeah, but it's not a hundred percent. You know, there are some Sundays where I come up, I come up with enough other rationalizations and excuses when I really don't want to do it, uh, not to do it. Um, but you know, most of the time, I just recognize that if I don't do this then I know what the consequences are going to be. You know, if I don't do it, then I'm going to have a screwed up week probably because I won't know, you know, I'll get up Tuesday morning and it's like, what am I doing this morning? Oh, I don't know. You know, what, what, do, you, what do you think you ought to do today? <laughs> you know, so it's, um, I just find it much, I find the benefits so good that even when I'm not feeling motivated and energetic about doing a review, um, that helps to kick me in the butt, you know, and say, you better do this because you're going to be sorry all week that you didn't do this. That makes sense. And also for me, it's it's like, you know, life passes by and it changes and, you know, life is kind of messy sometimes. And this consistency almost is coming back to your foundations on a regular basis to be like, you know, mm -hmm. am I doing the right stuff? Like, am I, you know, am I in the right focus? Am I in the right direction? I find that just it rebalances me uh, on a regular basis. So I, I definitely, it's, it's a routine, which I don't think I'll ever, I'll ever skip like this, you know, at least for yeah. long times. I mean, for, you know, people talk about, oh, you know, you need to focus on doing the, the things that are important to you. Well, that sounds wonderful, but for me, I need a structure to make that happen. It's not yeah. gonna happen by me just thinking about that and then going out and doing it, you know? Definitely. I've got to have some structure that keeps bringing me back to that and says, hey, dummy, here's what's important. Here's what you've said is important. Is it or isn't it? You know, if it is, you need to pay attention to this, you know, okay. and then kind of work from there. So Dave actually had a very good question. Dave asked, um, so the role questions you've got are very open-ended. Um, so therefore, how do you prevent thinking too deep and spending too long on all the possibilities when they can be quite open-ended, your role questions? I don't know. You just, um, for me, I just get to a point where I think, well, that's enough for now. You know, for one thing, the quarterly reviews are, are really reserved for the much more deeper in-depth thinking. On the other hand, 
you may encounter something in the middle of a quarter that changes things for you and the way you're doing things. And you may have to stop then and, and take time to think it through. Um, I use, I use mind node, you know, mind maps for just about everything. So mm -hmm. I might draft a mind map about some decision I have to make about what direction I'm going in, in with something. Um, but, you know, it's, you just kind of have to play it by ear and what you're comfortable with, I think. It's kind of like when I was a JAG in the Air Force, one of the things I loved about being a JAG is I was constantly being hit with new questions, new problems to solve. And I like that. On the other hand, you were really busy and you didn't have time to spend a lot of time researching stuff. So some commander came up and asked, uh, asked you, uh, you know, can I do so-and-so? Well, you had to learn to do just enough research to be fairly confident that you had the answer and yeah. then give them the answer and then move on to the next thing. You know, so that's, that's really, that's really up to your personal choice and what you feel like you need, I think. Okay, and just uh, just for uh, confirmation, what uh, what's JAG stand for? What is JAG? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that's Judge Advocate General. That's uh -huh. a lawyer in the Air Force or or in the Army or whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, it was like it definitely is not referring to the car. We refer to the Jaguar as like a Jag sometimes. Oh, yeah, it definitely yeah. can't be the the car. <laughs> well, there was there was an American series also called Jag. It was Navy Jags. But I used to get up and tell people, I was in the Air Force. We weren't like the Navy Jags. We didn't get to fly hot, fly planes and chase hot women all the time like they did on their show, <laughs> you know. Fair enough. We had to do we had to do legal, we had to do legal work. The real stuff. <laughs> um, we had another question, and it's actually linked to something I was thinking. So Dave said, like, uh, do you limit the number of roles you've got? And I would add to this question. And maybe you, you know, maybe the resources you mentioned to uh, Max, uh, Max Sparky stuff goes it goes into more detail. But when you're deciding the roles, like how did you decide which roles were most important to you? Like you know, you could technically have an infinite number of roles. How do you how did you decide the few that does which are most inf uh, most important to you? I think the approach I used and I still use because when I do my quarterly reviews, I really try and take a look of are there any other roles that I'm missing here? Um, I think you look at what you're doing. You know, you can look at your calendar. You can you can think about what you did the past week. And let's see, I went to lunch with my wife. That's a uh, husband. Um, I texted with my daughter about a, a child custody case she's got going on. That's father. Um, I went and visited my 97-year-old dad. That's a son. Um, I um, I worked on a blog. Gee, that's the creative part of me, writer. Right. Um, you know, you kind of look at what you're doing and then boil all of that down. The first time I did it, um, it was it was a, th a two and a half day process from the standpoint, and I was lucky because I had the time to do it. But I kept jumping back and I'd think of something else and I'd list my roles out first. And then as I was in process for one thing, I would think, you know, that there's another role over here that I'm not thinking about. And I've got 10 of them listed. Um, some of them have other things below them. Like I have hobbyist as one role, life role. And that's got all, that's got like five different things under it. Photography, backpacking, um, uh, cooking, blah, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. So I didn't break e out each one of those. I just kept it under hobbyist. And when I see that role, I see those individual breakouts. And for me, that's enough, you know, for that. Um, it's something you just have to kind of do on your own and work through and figure out what makes sense for you. Um, I wanted to have enough to where it covered my all my basic different areas but i didn't want 25 of them either yeah yeah, yeah. Know, so yeah so you try and compact them and see what goes together and what fits under what like i mean i've got things like um i've got things like i make sure all the bills are paid yeah um i do the house maintenance i do um chores uh, on saturday morning household chores water the plants all that kind of stuff i do my own laundry you know all that well those aren't all separate roles i have those under all being uh for me a reliable person you yeah. know i've got these jobs to do 
and I do them, you know? Right. So that makes sense for me. Maybe that would make sense for somebody else. Yeah. But to try and, I try and boil it down to the large categories that kind right. of everything else comes under. I like it. And, you know, we, we, like I said at the beginning of this session, we br briefly spoke a few months ago about, you know, your process and everything. And what I really loved about the roles thing is it, it is so much more balanced. Like often when we're doing our weekly review, you're only looking at your work, maybe the, the things you've got to take off at work. And the fact mm -hmm. that you're taking everything into account, like your, you know, your parenthood, your being a spouse, all these things, the fact you're taking that into account as part of this review you know, I think it does really help you live a more balanced life. Have, have you seen, has there been any impact in your life? Can you, can you reflect back to before and now? And can you, I, I know it's very difficult to measure, but anecdotally, have you seen like an impact on the way you're living and the way it's impacting you? The short answer is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, like I say, I got to a point, there's a stage in retirement that most people go through, which is kind of where you just feel lost and unproductive and get depressed. You know, you see people like that in retirement. Um, what this system did for me is it really helped me to identify what's what's important to me. See, that's the way I went about finding finding what's important is by looking at roles. You know, I've been to all of these retreats and stuff where they say, oh, pick out your your 10 top values and then take two of those and now take one and write your life mission statement yeah. to me that you know that never worked never made any sense to me and i was just frustrated with that because either people came up with some vision statement that was so broad it wasn't helpful or it was like me i it was just didn't compute you know it didn't make sense when i ran across this approach of roles though that made sense. Yeah. You know, you're probably going to be spending time on the things that are important to you. Duh. Okay. So you identify what you're doing, clump them together in the roles that they fit. And to me, that helped me identify what was important. And then I could say, ah, those are the things that are important to me. What can I do in each one of these areas to, to do a better job? Yeah. to to align my life with that so in a sense it gave me a life <laughs> i hate to say it that way but um yeah. it kind of gave me a life it gives me a purpose it gives me that led to my my productivity from the feeling of being productive and writing and all of that because once i figured out what was important to me then it was like okay well who am i what kind of characteristics do i have as a person what am i good at what am i bad at which is, um, you know, I pretty much learned from um, personality profiles and that sort yeah. of thing. And then the question was, what kind of work do I really like doing? What do I, what kind of work do I really feel fulfilled in doing? And I realized what I really like doing is learning about new things. Um, a lot of times it's complex stuff, breaking it down and teaching it yeah. to other people and helping them with that. And I thought that's those are the experiences in my life that have always been fulfilling. So my start with roles kind of led me to that point. And then it was, oh, OK, I need to have a I need to have a blog. One point yeah. I had two, but now I only have one that I'm at and that's active. But I need to have a blog that I'm working at because that's going to make me product feel productive. I do presentations for a local Mac iOS group, too that helps too you know that's a positive thing for me to do i feel fulfilled when i do yeah. that so i would say what started out is just identifying and evaluating roles led through that process to feeling that i have a more fulfilling and productive life so that's that's a that's a big thing <laughs> yeah that's that's fantastic um and yeah it, it makes total that's, sense go on sorry especially when you don't have a job <laughs> um all right so we've, we've not got that long left to the end of the session there's one question here and if anyone's got any last minute questions throw it into the chat um one last question which is already here how could this be applied to people who spend time doing stuff that's not important to them but must be done so you know you prioritize your things based on how important and how valuable they are what about the stuff which aren't important but have to be done i guess i don't know maybe even the chores well that's for me that's for me, that's like uh, laundry. Um, 
<laughs> you know, um, cleaning my bathroom. Yeah. You know, I, it's not, that's not important, as important to me as it is to my wife, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it's something that has to be done. Um, I think what you do is you still list those as roles and you examine those and maybe ask, how can, how can you do better in those roles, even though it's something you don't enjoy doing? Now, if it's an optional role, if we're talking about work, you know, how you make your living, it may not be optional. You may just have to do it, but you may be able to change things at work to make it more, um, more enjoyable, more productive, more fulfilling for you. Maybe, maybe not. You may need yeah. to find a different job or something eventually. Um, I think for those kinds of things, that's good. Or if it's an optional kind of role, you may want, you may decide, remember one of those questions in the quarterly review was, what do you really hate about this role? What do you dread? Yeah. Well, is that something I can get rid of? Is it going to make any difference if I don't do that? Yeah. Or is that something I can give to somebody else? Can I pay somebody to do that? Yeah. You know, I, if I don't want to lawn, if I don't want to mow my lawn, I can always pay somebody to look to mow my lawn if I've got the assets available. So even with something you don't necessarily want to do, um, there are still possibilities if you think about it and approach it this way. Brilliant. That makes sense. Yeah, I think it makes total sense. Um, so yeah, appreciate that answer. Um, and yeah, just to, to wrap things up here, thank you so much for taking the time to, to prepare this, to put all this together. Uh, where can people find out about you? You mentioned your blog. Where, where can people discover more about you and read your blog? Where can people find you? Oh, okay. It's um, originalmacguy.com. And that comes from the fact that I had one of the original Macs back in 1984. So right. that makes it easy to remember. And in that um, in that sh that um, uh, craft document that I shared under the event, that's got links to a bunch of my blog articles that deal with roles and reviews also. So you can go into that and click on one of those and go to the blog as well. Awesome. I'll, I'll make sure and that's about it, really. I'll make sure both are linked to on YouTube as well so people can check it out if they're watching this uh, at a later date. Um, and I just wanted to say, yeah, thanks again for putting this together. Uh, I really learned a lot. It was a really, really interesting glimpse into the way you're organizing your life. Um, and then everyone, you know, this is, uh, we do these uh, craft webinars on a semi-regular basis, usually every week or two. So lots of, lots of cool things coming up as well. Um, and just, yeah, thank you for checking in. Thank you for watching this, yeah. this webinar. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep doing some cool stuff uh, together. <laughs> And, and thank you for the opportunity. And I want you to know that those of us who are active in the um, in the circle group really appreciate your work with that. You do a great job. Thank you, Jim. I really appreciate you as well. Um, thanks, everyone listening in and enjoy the rest of your days. And uh, we'll, we'll catch up soon.